Good morning, one and all. Bureda, welcome, Croiso, Hanul Gavashon. It's good to see you, it really is. And uh, wherever you are this morning, we're pleased, delighted that uh, you've decided to join us here at Kinmel Bay Church uh, for our daily Bible study. Just a brief 10 minutes of uh, Bible study and meditation together. And uh, we're working through the Acts of the Apostles. As I guess most of you will know, we're in Acts 23 this morning. And if you haven't read it already, well, this might be the time to uh, hit the pause button uh, and then just join me again in five minutes or so. OK? Good, good. Well, here we are. The gospel is spreading and the Apostle Paul is determined to get to Rome. That's where he's got his sight set upon. He arrives in Jerusalem, uh, which is en route, but there is opposition and rioting against him and because of him. We take up the report of what's going on in chapter 23, and uh, there are still riots. In fact, things are not getting any better, they're getting worse. Ananias, the high priest, decides to get involved, and Paul has the temerity to call him a whitewashed wall. Would you believe it? That wasn't exactly a diplomatic thing to do. And then, well, it seems to me, and you can make up your own mind, Paul engineers a quarrel between the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and there is a further uproar. There is a plot to kill Paul. That's next on the agenda, but is discovered just in the nick of time by Paul's nephew, and the plot is thwarted. Now, the commander of the guard decides that it's about time that he gets involved, and he decides to take Paul into custody and to pass him on to uh, the governor uh, of the province, uh, a guy by the name of uh, Governor Felix. Uh, and he was based in a place called Caesarea. Governor Felix, will you take it from me, was an absolute monster. He was a monster, dreadful character, who had a history of all kinds of atrocities. The commander organises an escort to ensure that Paul gets there uh, to Governor Felix safely. The distance between Jerusalem and Caesarea is somewhere uh, in the region of 75 miles. And the commander, well, organises an escort, and the escort to take Paul, one man, uh, two um, uh, Caesarea, well, listen to it, uh, consists of 200 soldiers, 70 horsemen, and 200 spearmen. Now, if you're good at arithmetic, if you're good at sums, you can quickly add those up, and you will see that the escort consisted of uh, 470 men and some horses as well, all to take one man, just to take Paul to Caesarea. But they got him there safely, and they hand him over to Felix. Now, uh, in Caesarea, Paul is nearer to Rome, and again, the gospel is spreading. The gospel is spreading. I sometimes wonder what it was that caused the motivation behind uh, Paul's efforts, the missionary programme in which he was involved, the extent of which is almost beyond the limit of human endurance. Now, God had very clearly indicated to Paul what he must do and what he must suffer. And then, uh, as there was a need to do, uh, God spoke uh, clearly to Paul uh, on several occasions to assure him and to encourage him. When Paul was converted, he was told by God how he must suffer. And uh, you'll remember a few years later, as he approached Corinth, we saw it in uh, chapter 18. As he approached Corinth and was obviously very nervous because Corinth of old stood for everything that was considered to be both lewd and evil. It was a quagmire of sin. Well, Paul says uh, a bit later uh, that when he approached Corinth, he was very, very nervous and full of fear. In Welsh, llawn o ofn a crindod mawr. Llawn o ofn a crindod mawr. Very uh, nervous, but God reassured him. And then here in the chapter we're looking at, in chapter 23 and verse 11, we read the Lord standing near to Paul one night and saying to Paul, who again must have been nervous about what was ahead of him, uh, the Lord says, take courage. As you have testified about me in Jerusalem, so you must also testify about me in Rome. 
Later, he said to Paul once again, Paul, do not be afraid. And that really was the crux of what God said to the apostle when he needed to be encouraged. Do not be afraid. Don't be afraid. Pied a ovni. Now, during his time upon earth, you might remember that our Lord Jesus Christ spoke on so many occasions in the same manner to various people, to the chronically sick man that we read of in Matthew, Matthew, <coughs> excuse me, Matthew's Gospel and chapter 9, Jesus said, do not be afraid. To the sick woman in the same chapter, Jesus said, take heart, do not be afraid. To his disciples in the storm that's recorded in Matthew's Gospel and chapter 14, our Lord Jesus spoke, take courage, do not be afraid. And then again to his disciples shortly before uh, Calvary's cross, shortly before the Lord Jesus was nailed to that cross, he speaks to his disciples and he says, look, in this world you will have trouble. In this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer, take heart, he says, take heart, because I, the Lord Jesus Christ, have overcome the world. Take heart. And of course, and the message I want to bring to you this morning, really, is that as God's people, we can always take courage in times of difficulty, because the Lord, the same unchanging Lord Jesus Christ, is with us in exactly the same fashion. He has promised never to leave us or to forsake us. He has promised that nothing will come our way beyond the limit of his gross grace that we might cope with. I'm aware that uh, I'm confronted this morning by a, I nearly said congregation, I'm confronted this morning by a group of people uh, and uh, it will always such a group include people who for some reason or the other will be hurting and fearful. Look at me now, you might fall into that group this morning. This morning as you listen to me, you might be hurting and you might be fearful. Folk might be hurting, they might be fearful for any number of reasons. Health problems, family problems, a recent bereavement, Financial pressures because of what's going on with this virus business at the moment. Employment problems for the same reason. Personal problems. Spiritual pressures because of what's going on in the world. Problems that only you and the Lord know about and you prefer that other people didn't know anything at all about them. People who are hurting, we're hurting, very often. Without exception, you and I need reassurance. And that reassurance is always to be found here in God's word and in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is our reassurance. I was wondering what verses maybe I should finish this morning by quoting to you. Well, let me say to you that I want to quote from a paraphrase, a paraphrase uh, of the Bible. Kevin, I am not quoting from the message. You need to be assured of that. But listen, this is the one that I wanted to quote to you. It's Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6, where the writer says, And now jest, as you trusted Jesus to save you, trust him too, for each day's problems live in vital union with him. Do you know, we've trusted, if we're Christians, we've trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for the greatest thing that we could ever trust him for. We've trusted him for our salvation. We've trusted him for the forgiveness of our sins. We've trusted him that we might be reconciled to God and address God as our heavenly father. Now, surely, surely, if we've trusted him for something as enormous as that, we can learn and we can have that confidence to trust him for every day's problems that cause us hurt and fear. And once again, in the letter uh, to the Hebrews, there's some verses that I always turn to when uh, I need such reassurance. And in chapter 12, we read their very well-known verses. I've got them underlined very heavily in my Bible, where we read these words. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith, 
who for the joy set before him endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him, consider Jesus, who endured such opposition from sinful men, so that you and I will not grow weary and not lose heart. Don't be afraid. Our confidence is in the Lord Jesus Christ. May God grant that that be the case for each and every one of us in these, um, well, quite upsetting days, really. Can I just say, before I switch off, that if you're watching this morning and you're not a Christian, if you're watching this morning and you've never trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Saviour, then you need to do so. You need to bow the knee, acknowledge that you are a sinner, believe that Jesus died for you, that he's been raised from the dead, and reach out to him. As the vast majority of people, well, with us this morning, will have done. Reach out to him and enjoy that experience that he and he alone is able to give, that certainty of life eternal and life in all its abundance. Blessed be his name. Blessed be the name of the Lord Jesus. Dioch in Waitheto am Grando. Thank you all so much for listening again this morning. The Lord bless you, and I'll see you again soon.